Hey, uh, we we're are, live. um, we're live. Welcome back to Two Rights Make a Ron. That is Daniel. That is Russell. And back there, we have Carl and Lilo. Welcome back. It's been a while, guys. I gotta say that. It's been a long while. It's been a little bit. We haven't seen each other for a while, which is why our episodes are all a little wonky. Yeah, for we those were of you that are paying, bit. paying attention. Um, so I guess uh, we'll start the show off normally here. So The Rock, I'm sorry, man. A couple episodes ago, we decided I was going to abandon you uh, for other things, but I don't want to. We've decided that we like we like you and we like apologizing to you. And we want to keep him around, right? Yes. Correct. You, you agree with that? I do agree with that. I'm just, just, stop playing with your flipping stuff. What stuff? That stuff. No. Yeah, because it, 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 there's so much noises that come out in the recording. It, that, that's what, it's a podcast. <laughs> People are here for noise. <laughs> yeah, so, so we're not abandoning the rock. So. No, not, no. Okay. Not right now, at least. Okay, not yet. Not yet. Not until he abandons us. Yeah. Which he has not. Yeah, he hasn't. Um... But I am also not abandoning Chris Stefano. Is that correct? Is that the yeah. r- correct way to pronounce it? Did yeah. You, it did is. you like research and practice in the mirror? No. It's just I literally knew how to say his name. I just had a stroke that day. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know what else to say to you about that one. Uh, Chris Stefano, come here. I want to hang out. Let's hang out. I'll go to New York. I'd love to go to New York. That'd be fun. Yeah. Bert, Bert Kreishner, still trying, uh, still want to talk to you. Let's get some vodka. Did you try looking for it again? Um, I have a buddy that does uh, work at a liquor store. Oh, okay. Um, and I told him that if he, it does come through his store, for him to snag me some bottles. So if it does get in stock, I'll get it cool yeah and do do they normally carry it he said um he he doesn't know he said off the top of his head he hasn't um uh he doesn't recall seeing it but he is more of a a brandy guy himself um so that's kind of what he knows all right i think i think that's kind of what i got out of that all right so you don't even know i'm not even sure so I mean, I kind of know. All right. Um, other than that, what else do we got? Do we got? I mean, we're celebrating something, I guess, kind of. Sort it of. is. Uh, this should be episode ten. This will be episode ten. So congratulations, yeah. guys! Uh, thanks to the crew back there. Jay's not with us today. He's not. He's uh. There was some deep sea stuff. That he had to deal with. So Carl's on the moon last time. Well, and Jay was at the moon before that, too. I don't remember that. Yeah. But now Jay's in the deep sea. Yeah, he's got some deep sea stuff he's got to take care of. Oh, is he working on C-Lab 2024? Shh. Why? Because I'm a curious person. You we you talked about this. No. You got to... We might have to bleep some of that. Um. <laughs> anyway, how are you? I'm fine. Yeah. Um. What you got going on? I don't know. Nothing. What do you got going on on top of your head? What? At the top of my head? Yeah. Your hair. Oh, my hair. Yeah. I have hair. Oh, okay. Just some of it, though. Some of it. Oh, yeah. It's cute. Head, it's, it's summer, if you can't tell by my apparel. Yeah. <laughs> it's a su- it's summer here in Wisconsin. So. Uh, so hoodies and yep. haircuts. Yeah. That's kind of what it was. And actually... You might be thinking too, like my beard's getting longer every episode. I grow my beards out for the summer, so because it keeps the sun off my face. Okay. I hate the sun. Yeah. And I do so much outside, so. Yeah. But you do nothing outside. Not a lot. No. I have no reason to. Most of the things I do don't require me to be outside. It's true. It doesn't. You know. I Plus, there's, like, spiders. Yeah. 
Oh, there's a giant spider down here that I killed before you came down. Ooh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, otherwise, other than that, I got fired. Yeah? Yeah, I did. Doesn't surprise me. Well, I got let go. I didn't get fired. Yeah, <laughs> there is no difference. There isn't a difference. Everyone keeps telling me, you didn't get fired. Yeah, you did. But yeah, but uh, yeah, they found out that I wasn't a fan of Beyonce, and they're like, you can't have that. Well, yeah. Not so allowed. That makes sense. Yeah. That's not actually what happened. No, but yeah. it is. Oh, I heard yeah, about it. it. Your yeah. boss called me, <laughs> and she was like, this bitch just shitting all over Queen Bee. Is that what they call her? Yes. I don't know that. Okay. I'm not a fan. <laughs> don't I, oh, mess with Beyonce's fans. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan though. So like, why would I know that? Why yeah. would I know? I'm surprised you haven't been attacked by the beehive. No, her fans are crazy though. That's why I'm saying like, like, all you have to do is just insult. Not even insult her, but like, there's even times where Beyonce is like, "Can y'all chill?" And yeah. they're like, yeah. "No." The it's like, it's, like, it's like you know what? Beyonce is all right. She is better than all right. Yeah, that yeah. is true. <laughs> like. Pitchfork. It's kind of like I was, I was waiting for more comments to get shot off after you s- after the person said uh, one fa- uh, One Piece fans are the worst. Oh, and then yeah. you said Demon Slayer fans are worse than One Piece fans. Yeah, I was waiting for more. I was waiting for more too. But you know, I guess more than like three thousand people got to see it for it really to spark a riot. Yeah, so. probably. Yeah. I mean, maybe soon. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. There's a. I uh. Demon Slayer has a new season on currently, so I thought if anybody was seeing that, maybe uh, they were going to be the ones to uh, be going, oh, I got to stop touching things. Why don't you give me something else to play with my hands then? You want me to bring a fidget spinner next time? No. Oh, okay. That's not cool. What, Naruto? No, stop touching my stuff. I didn't touch anything. Um... Yeah. What was I talking about? You guys, you just you're talking about Demon Slayer seasons. Oh yeah, the new season of Demon Slayer is out there, and uh, yeah. So I thought they were gonna be the ones. There's also My Hero Academia going on right now. Those are the two seasons that I know of. Yeah, I mean, there's always new anime going on all over the place. It's just I can't pay attention to all of it at once. Makes sense. I try. What about you? Have you watched any more One Piece? I have not. So you just took my advice? You just quit? Yeah, kind of. Okay. No, I'm trying to get through Legend of Korra. Because yeah. surprisingly, I've watched Avatar The Last Airbender one million times. And I've watched the first two seasons of Legend of Korra probably like ten times. But I've never watched season three and season four. So I'm There's half- a fourth season? There is. So I'm halfway through season that. three. Which is actually, the, the season three is kind of an interesting one. Um, and then I, don't, I have no idea what four is about. So all I know is that the show ends with her and Asami being lesbians going into the spirit world together. Cool. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, Carl and I, we saw the Haikyuu movie. Oh, what, I don't even know what that is. Haikyuu, the dumpster battle. That was the name of the movie. Oh. So Haikyuu... Um, is the Japanese word for volleyball. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, if uh, the show is about volleyball. Yeah, right. Yep. I know what show you're talking about. Um, and it's uh, it's called the dumpster battle is because uh, there's two schools that are just rivals with each other. And one of the schools, uh, they're essentially known as like cats and the other ones are crows. You know, the two animals that you would typically see fighting in a dumpster. Oh, interesting. And it was, uh, it was all right. It was all right. It was kind of bittersweet because we're getting shafted. We're getting shafted as far as anime is concerned for that story. It was a cool it was a cool movie, but like it could have been a season instead of a movie. And then there's going to be one more movie and that's the end of the series. Like they're not doing any more anime, but the manga goes much longer than the bullshit that they're giving us animated. So it's kind of that's why we're it's a little bitter bittersweet. 
All right. Right? Am I not wrong? Yeah, no, you're you're right. Okay. I can't answer whether you're right or not. I only, know. Only Carl can. Yeah, I mean, basically, right now, they're in their first year of secondary school, whatever it is in Japan, their version of high school. Yeah, they're basically and freshmen. They basically go through the entire school, their entire schooling, and then at the end, they kind of do like a post wrap up where they show where they are in their adult lives and yeah the movie is taking place in their first year of high school so and it's not going after that like we're missing years and years of their lives oh all right um cool so speaking of games yeah um, I, there's this thing that I've seen people do on, on the line where it's like a pair of people doing a podcast type of thing, kind of like what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. Right. And I kind of wanted to play this game with you. You want to play a game with me? Depends. Cause our brains work so differently that I want to see how we do it. This game depends. And let oh, me know if any of you guys have seen this game. What yeah. You, you just say two words. You was, you have yeah. To try so getting the same word on the count of three so like lila will count down from from three three two one go whatever and then we say whatever word we want that's how we start but then the goal is for us to say the exact same word by kind of meeting in the middle between the two words that we say and then you got to see how quickly you can end up saying the same word i'm gonna try this out oh, okay okay lilo count us down three Two, one. Ham Banana. Chad. Oh, man. I thought you were going to get this on first go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Ham Chad, Banana. You know where we're going here. Count us down. Three, two, one. Tacos Penis. Bel Grande. Okay. I don't even know what you said. Tachos Bel Grande? Yeah. What's a tacho? From Kim For- Possible? <laughs> From what? Oh, Kim, Kim Possible? Possible? No, 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 this is from Denny's. Oh, Denny's. Okay. No, I'm thinking of something else. Kim Possible is a great show. It's a good show. Yeah. I'm thinking of the Naco. My bad. Oh, yeah, the Naco. Um, okay, so you said Tacho Bel Grande, and I said penis. Um, I guess count us down. Three, two, one. Dinner. Sauce? You said dinner? I said dinner. I said sauce. Okay. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Condiments. <laughs> Was that a word, Ross? <laughs> no. Wow, wow. No. I don't think he said cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon said, or sandwich? Like I said <laughs> nothing. I think I said cinnamon. I think it came out like that. I literally brain farted. I stroked out. What do you want? Why are you stroking so often? Spaghetti. <laughs> okay, so spaghetti is your word. I yeah. said condiment. <laughs> and I said it like two minutes after oh, after one. you. All right, so Come on. count us down. Three, two, one. Noodles. Meatball. <laughs> spaghetti and Three? condiment? Come on. Three, two, one. Marinara. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused on what Carl's confused on. <laughs> yeah, what do you no, he got it that time. That's what I would have said last time. Spaghetti Wait. and condiment? You don't go marinara? Well, Tomato. I didn't, I didn't think he was going to go marinara. So I had to go with an ingredient inside of spaghetti that wasn't going to be marinara because this kid wasn't going to get it. Okay, so what was the word? You said I mean, tomato. You did go from penis to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Eat both of them. I don't know. Um, all right. So we're at, we're at. What was your last one you just said? I said tomato. Tomato and and we can't repeat words now. So <laughs> we're at tomato and we're at marinara. Oh man. Um. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Three, two, one. Ketchup. Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Ketchup vodka. You can make yeah, sauce. Tomato on. sauce, mm-hmm. a vodka sauce. I would have just said red. <laughs> yeah, that would have been that would have been fine. <laughs> All right. So we got ketchup and we got vodka. Yep. All right. Three, two, one. Porosos. 
Oh, Bert. We got it. Hit us up, man. See? That's that's how we get there. Yeah. Okay. Did it. Okay, we, we I want to do that like every episode. Oh, I don't. <laughs> that was terrible. Oh, man. I knew that wasn't going to go well. And Great. you, it was your suggestion. Yeah, it was my suggestion. Um, so, yeah. So, um, I had one other thing, though, that I was asking the last episode, but we wanted to wait for Carl to be here. Oh, I did. I wanted to wait for oh, Carl yeah. to be here. Pokemon. Pokemon. That was a while ago. I'm surprised I remembered that. And yeah. I guess you write things down, so that's why you remembered. Right. Yeah, I write things down. Um, so, what is the most powerful Pokemon? That's a convoluted question. What do you mean by... Co- there's a difference between the most powerful well, and the best Pokemon. No, I'm uh, most powerful as in who has the most power. What is that, Kyogre? It, it depends Rayquaza? what you mean. Do you who? miss me by base stats? Uh, no, I mean by lore of of Pokemon. Oh, wouldn't that well, just be like Arceus? lore, you could get away with saying Arceus, seeing as he is the god of all Pokemon. Or is okay. it the Solgaleo Necrozma? You're that all, one seems absurd. You're no, all wrong. No, no. Um, Factually, it, it are would you be, trying to say it's going to be Magikarp? It's not going to be Magikarp. It's going to be similar. You're close. Factually, though, I do think Dynamax. Uh, what's that legendary from Sword Shield? What's the dragon poison? Oh, it's, uh, 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 Eternatus. Eternatus, Dynamax Eternatus is technically the strongest. I think um, there's one that's that's more powerful though, and it's it's weird. It's not it's not. It's not a Pokemon that you're going to think of at There's all. There's also a YouTube video that just came out recently that had that they had AI basically do a whole bunch of Pokemon battles. Okay. Oh, I can't remember what came in first now, though, but I know it's... So what is your stupid answer Dragon according type. to stupid po- de- Pokedex entries? It's not even Pokedex entry. It's okay. just... It's just a, it's, it might be a Pokedex entry, but it's Diglett. Because... In uh, in in one of the episodes in the first season, they're they're doing construction on a dam and the diglets are ruining everything, yep. and the guy's trying to hammer them. And Gary's sitting there. He's like, he'll never be able to hit them. They can move their they can pull their heads underground at uh, one hundred eighty six thousand two hundred eighty two miles per hour, the speed of light. So, matter moving at the speed of light, and the mass that diglet is, they have like. 84 kilotons worth of power behind them so right. if they were to move that fast they could blow up the earth so, so yeah there there is the fact that throughout what are we we're on our ninth generation now yeah i think so eight or nine doug trio is still the fastest ground type pokemon in the game yeah yeah at 130 base speed well that's what they said too like if uh if um if doug trio they didn't make a comment about doug trio being able to move that fast so don't know but they said if you if you actually multiplied if you took all of the diglets that were in that episode at one time that were shown at one time which i think they showed about a hundred in one scene and -hmm. then multiplied all of them moving together at the same time they would have 10 million kilotons of force which is more than what the sun puts out what about sand slash in a sandstorm does I don't it think it's gonna sand rush. I don't think it's gonna be no. the the power of the sun. It's probably still not faster than Doug Trio. Trio. No. Okay, what did you say? I just said that that it still wouldn't be as powerful as the sun. So, so it's just it's just based on something that was. Do you know what Diglett and Doug Trio are based off of? Uh, the Easter Island heads. I don't know. Whack a mole. Oh, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Um. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of speed, though, there's like... Uh, Do you know who the best Pokemon is? The best Pokemon? Mm-hmm. Pidgeot. No. I mean, this is subjective, so... Mm-hmm. Not Sandshrew. It's yeah. not Sandshrew. Yeah. What's it's your... Incineroar. Why? Oh, competitively for Pokemon oh. doubles, VGC, it yeah. is the highest usage out of any Pokemon he's since just, it got its is, hidden ability. Because he's absurd. Right. No, his ability is just good. All right. He was useless before he got Intimidate. Cool. He's really good. That's good. Anyway. So, yeah, so that's just a little tidbit about Diglett. That's cool. So, how tall is Mario? Um, well, 
That's a loaded question. Yeah. Because if you want to compare him to a turtle. Or a he's, mushroom. He's like, yeah, like a foot tall. Or, yeah, or a mushroom. But I would say I would say that the can- canonical height of Mario, is, he's five foot six. Is it? That, I don't, I'm guessing. That's because, guess. like, there's the mushrooms, but only that, but, like, beetles. He's, like, the same size as a beetle. Yeah. A feather. There's a feather that's like the same size of him. According I mean, that to could Google, be a he's 5'1". 5'1"? Five one. Five five one. One. Holy shit. Is, Short is, king. Is Luigi over um, 6? So that means he's got to be like 5'6". Luigi is 5'9". Five 5'9"? Five five nine. Nine. Okay. Holy shit. Wario is 5'7". So he, they just live in a Wario's giant world. Wario shorter than, than Luigi? Who is? Yes. Wario? Wario? Yeah, I was not expecting that. I mean, he's... Yeah. And then how tall is... How tall is Wario? Is he shorter than Mario? Six Waluigi is seven foot one. Waluigi is seven one. He's got Yang Ming. Oh, wait, no, you said. Did you say Wario already? Yeah, he was five. Yeah, seven. I meant Waluigi. That's who I meant. Five, seven one. Seven one. Yeah, that's who I thought was. Princess Peach is six foot one. Oh wow, she's tall. Yeah. Daisy is five eleven. Okay. And Toad is three foot five inches. Well, how big is Donkey Kong? Six foot one on his knuckles. Okay. They don't know how tall he is standing. Right. How tall is Bowser? He's going to be like eight 10 feet foot tall. Seven. Oh, t- eight foot seven. Damn. All right. What about Link? Link is 5'10". Which Link? <laughs> adult. Just adult Link. What about the Here. missing Link? How tall was the missing Link? Is there a missing Link? Yes, there's a missing Link. That's why we haven't technically proven evolution oh that i thought you were talking about Zelda <laughs> still. um did you uh so so did you know that like one of and there's more games where link doesn't go to the past but do you know which game link does not go to the past a lot of them in a link to the past the one where it's in the name he doesn't go to the past at all there's no time travel okay. i thought that was kind of funny i think it got translated differently in america Oh, so are the names in in Nippon not not the names they are here? I'm pretty sure, oh. at least for that one. Oh, speaking of that, <laughs> this is one of the most boring things that I've ever been excited about in my entire life. Is this more stuff about sumo wrestling? Not quite. Okay. No, not at all. But it, it actually just reminded me when you said, is this what it's like in Nippon? Because I've always had this weird um notion of like where the fuck do we get off just renaming countries yeah well this is yeah this, we, and yeah, um yeah. apparently in america we don't make that decision we just accept it yeah we, we it, have we have a uh, uh, a part of our government that um that is led by our Secretary of Interior. It's called the BGN. I don't remember what the full name of it is, but it literally accepts the English names of other countries, which I just found out British does this. Britain does this. England has the PCGN. Okay. And they are the one. I actually didn't even see what that fully looks like written out. I don't know what it stands for. Okay. But they um, they are the ones that kind of rename things. They submit approvals to other countries because it is tradition to have a um, an English shorthand version of a country comp- and then also an abbreviation for postal services. So they're all in the same part. And, yeah, there's a – Okay, so I, I want to pause you there for a second, though. Yeah. Because – you said it's good to have like a shorthand, right? Yeah. Well, Deutschland, two syllables. Yeah. Germany, three syllables. Yeah. But, so, but the way that doesn't make sense. But the way Deutschland is pronounced by people that speak that language, the German language, there is more to it than that. That a large portion of the world does not like they just can't do. Okay. Like they don't say that, so they do it to an English version. And I actually we figured this out from Czechoslovakia, which in 1992 became Yugoslavia and the Czech Republic, and in 2016 
It is now just Czechia. Right. And Slovakia. And, Slo- and Slovakia. And, and yeah. Slovakia, yeah. Um, and speaking of Germany, though. Yeah. Do you think they're going to be excited that they're going to finally be on the right side of the world war? <laughs> You're assuming that that, that, that side is going to win. No, like, I mean, the moral side. Not necessarily the side that's going to win, but the moral side. Well. Because they're friends with us, so I, they're going to be. <laughs> I'm going to say, the side that wins will become the moral side. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I just thought that that would be funny. They're going to be like, World War Three is going to happen in Germany. He's like, we, we don't know what to do. <laughs> that was more of an Asian accent. I don't know what that was. <laughs> don't. We tried. <clears throat> and then, um. yeah. Yeah. Um, what else you got? You like jokes? It depends. Well, Lilo, do you like jokes? Do you it's like do you like black jokes by chance? Not particularly. Not particularly. I'm not necess- well, I guess it depends. It depends on the joke of how offensive it is, but like Well, I guess we got no okay. more to say. Good well, night, no, folks. Well, <laughs> so then I'll ask you I want to ask you how offensive this joke is. Can I tell you a joke? Sure. And I want to ask, and Jesus. you tell me how offensive it is. Okay. If you would have said you would have liked, who would be like, "Fuck yeah, let me tell you this one," <laughs> and he would have said it excitedly without knowing how offensive it is. Yeah. <laughs> but right. now that you said you might have been offensive, you're like, "Well, let me." I still want to say it. Well, now instead of telling a joke, I'm just I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn a little bit here. Uh, so what starts with an N and ends with an R that you never want to call a black person? What? A neighbor. Oh. <sighs> That one sounded that sounded pretty offensive. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where like I'm not upset by it, but like there's definitely some people who would just be like, they would not like it. Yeah, it's just I just like the cleverness to it. That's that's all. Okay, like, and I that's can, what and I that's can what I like about that. it. I can see that. I don't I like the racism. Take it or leave it. But the <laughs> cleverness behind it and the wordplay. That's what I like. I like good jokes like that. I'll give it a point for wordplay. All right, cool. But also, I just don't particularly find racial jokes to be funny in general. All right, yeah, I, I just like I like clever ones. But yeah. You got any jokes? Um. I mean, I had I I got this one that I saw on the internet today, that made me laugh. Did you see that Miley Cyrus? She's going to be in the Silence of the Lambs remake? No. She's going to be Hannibal Montanable. <laughs> that was offensive. <laughs> That's yeah. all right. That one was, that one was all right. Um, and then her dad's going to be Buffalo Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> that was better. <laughs> Did you just make that one up? That one I just thought <laughs> of. Good, good I don't know if I, if, I, if I was the first one to ever think that up, but... It did just pop into my head of my own volition. Good for you. I'm so proud of you for that. Um, <coughs> yeah. Speaking of uh, um, volition, I don't know how I'm segueing this one, but uh, we've been, you, me, and Carl, we've been kind of playing games a little bit Okay. Uh, in his basement and stuff. Sometimes. And have, uh, Carl, have you or you, have you heard of this new game called Oh Dear? Yeah, dear. Yeah. No. Have you seen? Have you played it? No. I, I thought, thought we. I thought this would be a fun game to play, but you essentially you have like hunters that are all trying to hunt a deer, and if you fail to hunt the deer, the deer turns into a demon deer, and then no, you just go and I'm like thinking. murder the hunters. I thought that kind of sounded. I fun. think I've seen it. Yeah, it's not the one I was thinking of. No, which one were you thinking of? A game called Deer, and it was about a really long deer. Oh. <laughs> What's the premise of that game? You were a deer with a really, really long neck. So it it's just a, a sand. It's a sandbox. Game. No, it was a deer. Okay. Yeah, and it was um, yeah, it was a, just a sandbox game. All right. Kind of like Goat Simulator or something. Goat Simulator, yeah. It's the most realistic game I've ever played. I've never played it. Uh, the most realistic game I've ever played probably would be Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay. I was waiting for you to say Skyrim. No. 
there's nothing about that that's realistic. Right. Red Dead Redemption 2, that's pretty realistic. Um, I mean, besides maybe some of the racing games, I guess. Oh, maybe yeah, s- like racing and sports games, those are probably, I guess, the most realistic. But as far as, like, fiction, All right. I, I would say Red Dead Redemption 2 because of a lot of the mechanics that they implemented <laughs> into the game. And you, you like the first one, right? It's phenomenal. And the you like the second one, one more? Um, I did not put enough time into the second one to give that one an appro- uh, uh, that an appropriate appraisal. But th- I would say, probably storyline wise, from what I know, the s- the second one is probably better. But I'm gonna still give it up to the first one because. It was a simpler time. The game was a simpler time, or when the game came out, the world here in real the life game was, a, was simpler a simpler time. time. Okay, so like, like back in the first Red Dead, Redem- Red Dead Redemption, they uh, it was just a video game, right? You had an inventory, which seemingly was a bottomless pocket that you pulled out of your ass, right? And in Red Dead Redemption Two. Like, you're only allowed to carry one bear pelt pelt at a time because it's a fucking 100-pound pelt. You know? So you literally carry it on your shoulder. Yep. And you walk slow through snow and everything. And that didn't exist in the first one. So, like, there is something to say, like, as as amazing as some of these games could be. Like, it's, it's kind of like the argument of, like, like pay to win games and stuff like that do like some people only have a limited amount of time and there's so much shit that happens in red dead 2 it's just a big time sink so the fact that the first one was simpler was just made it an easy uh, like a better accessible game it's just easier to play without being simple like okay. it's just yeah <coughs> sometimes i don't need all of that realism in a game yeah, it's just you know making a game too big is sometimes a detriment to some games. Yeah, well, I, there's I can't remember what game it was. I can't remember what game it was, but there's a game where it's essentially you can have a limited capacity of what you're allowed to do, or you can kind of turn that feature off. So if you want, excuse me, an unlimited inventory, you can have an unlimited inventory, which I kind of like that kind of stuff because I don't necessarily play games that are so involved like that i don't i can't get into it that much to enjoy it for long term Uh, it's kind of like what's it called uh starfield which i'm sure fallout is the exact same way but you tell me uh because i haven't played fallout but i've played starfield but like if you end up getting too much in your inventory like you just you can barely move Mm -hmm. and it's just like i don't need that just get get rid of that feature turn that feature off that one i that one i get the fallout the the elder scrolls the the bethesda games that's that's fairly li- that's fairly lenient that's okay. fairly lenient for inventory space like even at the very beginning of the game you have almost what i would consider consider a lim- a limitless bag compared to some games okay i mean I like diablo 2 that inventory system is fucking horrible i hate it it's amazing but i hate it it's just like a grid. You just have a box, and you have to fit things in there. You can't fit it in there. You can't fit it. Fuck it. Like you, have, wait, it's not even a space. Wait, you, you have to like puzzle piece it together. Yeah. Or oh, okay. Mm, yeah. Now, granted, it's not so hard to the point where everything's a puzzle piece. It literally is just like, oh, this amulet is a two by two amulet to space. One. Oh, so it is gridded. So it's kind of like, so it's kind of like, if you look at like Breath of the Wild or like uh, Tears of the Kingdom. You have one slot per item, yeah. but some items might be bigger, so they have to take up two slots or three slots. Well, it's a grid, so like, so like so a like battle a, axe takes up six spots, but an amulet takes up one. Okay. Yeah, but it's not like it's spots as in like this is six weight or something. It's literally a grid, so like the battle axe is two, two by three. Way. Yeah, and then yep, okay, right. So like yeah, then you yeah you. There have are to some put. long swords that are one by four. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, and that's kind of annoying. And then, you know, certain things are able to stack, like potions stack, right? Or no, potions don't stack. There are certain inventories that stack. 
and stuff, but I don't know. It gets weird. You belt your potions. Oh, yeah. You, you have a belt that's right. that can hold up to 12 potions. Yeah, yeah that's in no, Diablo 16 two. potions. And then they all changed right. all of that in Diablo 3 and 4. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Is there, there's Diablo 5 coming out, right? No. I thought there was. No, Diablo there was. 4 just came out like a year Diablo ago. Diablo 3 oh. just dropped DLC. Like what? Diablo last 4? Week. Yeah. Diablo 4 just did oh, its new season. I've been seeing advertising for Diablo. I mean, so I don't know if you want to call it Diablo 5, but they basically remade the game. Okay. Well, there's um. also the mobile. Oh, yeah, there's Diablo Immortal. Okay. I guess if you want to throw, throw that in there. All right. Three point five. Cool. Diablo four n minus one. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um. Yeah. That's about it. I've been playing Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. It's pretty good. That's good. It's a good remake. It looks great, actually. So does it look much better than the original? Yeah. Okay. Because there's games that they make like that, always looked flipping fantastic, and I, it's like you can't really improve on it because it was such like I guess fake graphics that it doesn't necessarily get looking better like all the Yoshi games like like the clay one and the Woolly World right where it's like they're made out of other stuff it's like those ones have been were coming out on like gamecube and now they're coming out on the switch but they essentially look just as good you're looking at it on clear clear tv but they look just as good because when you have that level of fakeness i guess it's easy to make the games look good at worse graphics if that makes any sense I mean, I guess I know what you're saying, but... Like, what were some of the best-looking games uh, on, like, PlayStation 2? I would uh, say, like, Dark Cloud, Cell Shaded Games. Those are some of the best-looking games. Well, uh, yeah, that's because of it, the art style, right. though. Metal Gear, but, I think, but, is, div is considered one of the best-looking games on PS2. Metal Gear 3? Well, but I, I would say graphic-wise, though, like, the graphics still weren't great, right? Like, it was a good-looking game for the time, but it didn't look great or anything like that or realistic but if you take a cartoon type of thing mm -hmm. and cell shade it kind of because that's what paper mario well there are was, it's paper things, so like, like you can make that look good with limited graphics right i mean the cgi that was like the cutscenes that were in final fantasy <coughs> 10 or next level yeah well yeah the like that one any like that non-gameplay stuff was really like, good yeah that was that was a movie because that was essentially just a movie that they made. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's what a lot of games are. Just movie scenes sometimes. Well, some games actually make it as like a movie, the cutscenes. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. some games have... Like they're pre-rendered and... Yeah, you're actually in the game world yeah. with the cutscenes. Yeah. Like uh, the new Spider-Man game is like that. There is no difference between the game and the, the CGI. And, well, the, and the, CG, the CGI uh, scenes actually uh, serve as most of Spider-Man's loading screens. Okay, that's what that's one thing that people are trying to like, trying to break uh, Red Dead Redemption because they're like setting people on fire right before they trigger cutscene. So then the person mm -hmm. is on fire, talking to you, not reacting to being on fire, but like as they're on fire, like their skin is getting burnt, their clothes are burning off, and all kind of stuff mm -hmm. through as they're just talking normal through the mm -hmm. cutscene so i think that's mm -hmm. that's funny stuff there's like, a couple yeah. of games that do th that are able to do things like that too like skyrim or any like you're able to trigger some weird things to happen in in those types of games because the world around you doesn't stop while you're skyrim doesn't have cutscenes well, I mean, like when you're in conversation. Yeah, but it's not a cutscene. No, it's different. It's not a cutscene. Skyrim like has during, zero cutscenes. Um, yeah, okay. like load points and stuff like that. <coughs> especially, especially now that the Fallout show came out, like everybody is like all on the <coughs> board of replaying the Fallout games. So, did you watch the show? I have not watched the show yet. Okay. Have you heard that it's good or not? I have heard that it's very good. Oh, okay, that's good. 
Yeah. Well, Goggins is just a good actor. Yeah. Walter Goggins. Walton. Walter. Walton. Walton? Is it Walton? I Walton sounds right. Or without the nose. Yeah, the ghoul, yeah. Yeah, he's the ghoul. Yeah, we just I just watched him in Vice Principal. Funny show. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I have not watched um much of anything recently, actually, besides High Q. That's like the newest thing I've seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah. it's Walton. Walton. Walton Goggins. I'm kinda junior. Almost sick of watching stuff. Yeah? Yeah. I just don't want to sit down and watch stuff. Makes sense. Yeah, I've been sitting down and watching stuff for too long. Even the stuff that I've always enjoyed. Uh, Fast and Furious was on last night. Didn't get much enjoyment out of it. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Nah, knock it off. I love... Th- they're such great movies. But I just... I was just like... I've just... It's just watching stuff. I, like, I, you know how much I love The Office, and I turned on The Office a couple weeks ago. I'm just like this... This isn't doing it for me. Uh, yeah. So what are you doing instead? Flying a kite, golfing, playing around on my computer. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Editing podcasts. Cool. Casts? You got multiple? Well, multiple episodes. Oh. Well. Cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, and what else you got? Uh, not much worthy of too much conversation. Uh, I have I have a couple things that that I was looking for segues into. Um, so yeah. Well, now is the perfect time. And segue to our next segment. That's you. What's the segment? Whatever you're about to say. Oh, um, uh, AI. Yeah, AI. Do you, I. Like, do you like AI? I don't know. I don't. Um, okay. But the funny... The what don't the you like about AI? Because I, I, I think it's honestly going to just make so many things obsolete, but yet it's really just going to put... So many people are not going to be working soon. So many people, so many people. I really think like the stuff that I did. I I honestly think that every single person's job could be replaced by AI, and you need maybe like three, four, maybe five people who are key subject matter es- experts, like in their field, to just monitor what the AI is putting out. And what does that mean? Like, what does that mean then? That 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 AI is going to take everybody's jobs? Well, I think that. People who have companies are gonna get what they want for very little investment, and uh, and no one's gonna have any money. But they're not gonna lower prices. Well, they're gonna have to. They're not going to. Well, they're gonna have to. They they just won't. They won't do it. Well, then they won't make money. Yeah. Well, they will because people have to buy stuff. Well, just look I, at, I don't think so. Just look at going through like when COVID happened. Look at like how many <laughs> yeah, people are yeah. still buying flipping cars. I was gonna say you're right. Look what happened during COVID and how many riots happened. Yeah, and which didn't and do anything. Looting, we didn't learn. We're looting st- prices and are still going up. They're just allowing people to loot in certain cities. That's it's what they did. The, that's what they're. That's because what the their economy came was. back. But if AI takes over, there's no coming back from that. Yeah. And at that point, it's gonna have to start being like. Things are gonna get crazy. You're <coughs> right. I what? don't. I mean, yeah, it's gonna take a lot of jobs, but at the same time, like, it's gonna change everything else, and it all depends on how government wants to deal with that yeah but uh but apparently though the thing that the story that i saw though about ai apparently amazon had stores Mm -hmm. that were ai stores that you don't pay you just walk in and there's like Mm -hmm. cameras and based on your phone and your wallet that you have built into your phone and your electronic devices when you go up to a product it knows you're picking that product and then you leave the store and your your digital wallet just automatically gets charged yeah so these were ai no Though all those stores are shutting down right now because they found out they were not AI stores. It was thousands of Indians watching TV screens, yep. monitoring what people were buying. It wasn't AI at all. Yeah. So that I thought that was kind of yeah funny slash crazy. Yeah, I uh, I don't think they got to the bottom of whose fault that was yet. 
I mean, wouldn't it be Amazon's fault? Well, would it? What if I sold you an AI program? I got Amazon pro- developed it, though. I got, it was, a, I got it was an AI am- program It was for Amazon's you. development, though. They're the ones who were marketing it as AI. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's they like, knew. But it, could, but it could have been, like, somebody else's, like, project. And then they're like, I got this AI for you. And, AI, and Amazon's like, oh, what is it? And then they show it to you, like, hey, this is the program. And they go, sounds good. I'm going to buy that. I get that if it's not Amazon. Why? Because Amazon made it. Amazon developed it and was marketing these as Amazon AI stores. So Amazon did it. Amazon knew what they were doing. So Amazon themselves developed the AI. Well, no, they didn't develop any AI for it. But they are the ones who created these stores and was marketing it as an AI store. But whose AI is it? It's not AI. It was Indians. (sighs) What are you trying to get at here? It was no one's AI. There was no AI. So why do you keep asking whose AI was it? It was supposed to be Amazon's AI. Yeah, never mind. Never I, mind. I don't know what you're asking. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, if I were to sell you a a, a a product, though, calling it AI, but it's really just someone else doing the work, then yeah, I would be at fault, not you. But that's not what happened here. Okay. Cool. Yeah, what else you got? Segway, next segment. Um, I got nothing. Okay. I got nothing at all. But I don't know. I I'm not as afraid of AI as everybody else seems to be. Yeah. I mean I think I think if they start putting it into cars, I think cars are gonna start killing people more so than they are now, excuse me. But the thing is like a car is gonna choose what's going to be less damaging right so if i'm in a if i buy a car and there's a self-driving car it is going to make the decision to not hit the pedestrian so like if i'm going at lilo it's going to make the decision to not hurt her but it's going to put me into a wall sure there's a less Why? chance of me being hit well, because it's there's like a 90 percent chance of her dying there's only going to be a 10 percent chance of me dying if it puts me into the wall versus the car just hitting her the thing is i don't want to put a car that's not going to have my safety why but interest. why why would you think that though because that's what's happening with them that's what's going on with cars well w- wouldn't they change that well why w- why but then w- where's the morale like no someone's going to regulate that and be like no we're not going to allow you to have a car that's just going to hit someone so that's well it's not going to allow people <coughs> to happen because it'd be the same as what the situation is now is it would weigh it was would weigh its differences and would put itself above what's around it your ai no. car should be saying that the car your car with you inside of it is more important than its surroundings what like, can they just it. program that into it but they're not programming them that way well they might mm. you know ai gets better but is that but uh, well i guess that's not necessarily saying that it's better that's just that's because if it's able to make the decision one way or another excuse me it's already pretty good so if it's just making the opposite decision that doesn't mean it's better ai it's just it's making a different decision right but i don't i'm not sure if they i'm not sure if the government would allow cars that are just going to be like yep we're going to hit someone well i don't think that's how anybody's going to look at it because what's the alternative what do you mean what's the alternative from hitting somebody crashing the car into a tree a wall whatever yeah i don't think the ai is going to want that either especially if it's a wall that would cause more damage potentially hurt more people it would take out that one fucking pedestrian one pedestrian sorry lilo but you by yourself is Way less damaging than any other of the solutions. That's actually the more logical choice is to plow through the one single person. I mean, yeah. Because now because now going into a wall, that damages the one person that's inside the car, assuming it's only one person inside the car, and it damages the car. Now there's property damage. The logical choice is killing the one person. Well, but the logical choice as far as what? Because, again, it's... 
if you're going to kill a person or you're going to cause some property jam damage, what do you think the – what's the logical choice? You know what? Here's the thing. What AI should do is instead of making the decision of should I run into a wall or should I run over Lilo, it it's should – always Lilo. <laughs> well, she, was, she is our pedestrian in this situation. Instead, it should quantum compute the physics – of the safest way and most glorious way to hit Lilo. Like, just sweep the legs out from underneath her instead of just plowing into her. Oh, yeah. And, and it's like. So it's just like the, it'll spin the car, just clip her knee by the edge of it, and she'll do like a couple flips in the air and land on her butt. Like, on, so, or I, I was so going to say, yeah, on her feet. Like, it knows. We actually, the car actually has to speed up a little bit yeah. and actually has to hit her a little bit harder yes. to get her to do two full rotations to get to her feet again. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather land on my feet than on my butt. Right. Okay, feet. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would say landing on anything besides your head is best case scenario, actually. So, yeah. so it should calculate physics to make – the the crash happen but safely and gloriously like something should always flip or there's there's a lake 50 feet to the right we need to hit her really hard to get her to fly into the lake for a soft landing mm -hmm. true but but the car's just hitting you really hard though you know yeah. could we get it like so it like scoops her instead so she kind of like instead of like getting hit and flown she just kind of like goes onto the hood of the car and kind of has like is on the hood what if it employs like bubble wrap on the outside all of a sudden it just goes yeah, yeah. actually why don't cars, airbags on the outside yeah why don't outside cars get airbags. bumpers why don't we get like bumper, bumper bumper car like inflatable bumpers okay yeah like they have those now they have those like helmet things for like old people it's like a helmet and like a, a vest and so w when it notices that they're at a certain angle of like temperature temperature is that a and uh, it like it blows up an airbag around their body so they don't break hips, they don't hit their head and stuff like that. Yeah, they should have that on the outside of a car. Yeah. <clears throat> I also think they should have like magnets on cars, so when you're gonna like rear end each other, you don't rear end each other. You actually you st keep the resistance. So e all the bumpers on cars, the front and opposite, will have the same polarity magnets. And it just repels each other. I think that would prevent traffic jams too. Then yeah, it would. And you could just go. You could. Everyone could just go, and you're just pushing each other along. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like more people would miss their exits then. <laughs> yeah, you see a blinker, and you just like speed up. Nope, I'm pushing you. You're not going off this exit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, to get back oh, to wait, the what? old what? killing robots, killing people thing. Yeah. If the engineers are following the three laws of robotics as Asimov has put it. It would not hit the human. We're not going to. I'm not following those rules. Well, I <laughs> well, don't think that you're an engineer. So, see, yeah, see, thank you, Carl. I don't think engineers are following those rules. either. I do. They absolutely are. Jesus. I do. I think Asimov is one of the most. But I don't think they are. I mean, they legitimately have fighter jets that are completely piloted by AI. That's not AI. That's no. That's they th don't. That's completely human controlled. Yeah. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, they've beaten. No, no. I've it's heard controlled with an Xbox 360 controller. I've seen the controllers. No, there's AI ones. Mm, there's I AI see. ones out there right now that have won against humans 100 percent out of 100 times. I, I'm not they, sure. They they do dog fights. I think I think these are simulated dog fights. I don't think it's actual planes flying through the air. I think they just did that. Um, someone's looking it up. I don't. I'm not sure if they got real fighter jets flying with AI. Because they just did a they just did an F1 race with AI cars, and they they can barely manage going down a track. I don't think. It looks like they just came out with one. Like it, this is, this is very recent. It looks like. And is it working? Yeah, like a month ago. Hey. They're doing it. There's a this article titled "U.S. Air Force Stages Dogfights with AI Flown Fighter Jets." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they won. 
No, but that's I've heard this band talk about okay, a lot. But how does how does that make your argument that cars wouldn't hit? Because that's 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 well, meant I'm just to, saying, that's meant to kill people. So right, <laughs> that's like they're engineering that AI to kill people. You're right, and why don't we do that to cars? And the AI is shooting. Yeah, well, I mean, you if have all of this information. Real bullets at the moment, right now, but they are getting into the position of a lock on. Like how, like, like in. No, I'm almost certain this is against the Geneva Code. I am almost certain they can't do this. They have been doing it. This is how they do test flights. With act- you said with guns. So it's like watching Top Gun. Have you watched? I, I don't in know if you've seen Top Gun. So Where they do a training. Like laser, this is how like laser two guns, humans. Yeah. Fight against each other. Two humans, two U.S. soldiers will t- hop in their separate things yeah. and they'll fight against each other. So they haven't. In planes. They have they not have computer systems that will lock yeah, on. They have. They have not used live ammunition for any of these things. Yeah, they don't use live ammunition, but they have the systems that uh, the actual system that a fighter jet would use. It's all computer based inside of the jet as well to lock onto their target. It just sounds like a terrible idea. I'm not saying it's a great idea. I'm saying they're doing it. We've already killed, as Americans, we've already, the American system has killed thousands of people because they can't tell what they look like from a camera on an airplane. The, yep. An AI is not going to do any better. I mean, I don't know if they're trying to do it to tell the difference between people. Well, no, they don't care. No. No, they just want more if. More what's efficiency. This, wait, oh, what's this whole killing people on planes thing? What's going on? The Have you fights. never heard of WikiLeaks? I mean, I've heard of WikiLeaks. I don't he know. He literally what... has shown video footage of them shooting a camera operator because they thought it was a guy with a bazooka. Oh, seriously? Yeah, a news reporter. You can look this up. Is this, this real? AI, AI shooting people? No, this isn't AI. This was a man drone a manned drone okay oh and we just couldn't tell what it was from the camera yes that's what it is because okay. it's a plane thousands of feet up in the sky yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think right. this was like a iraq thing i don't specifically remember i think it's a, it's been multiple times that things have like this have happened it was about the same time that obama decided to classify drone strike information But yeah, AI is getting crazy. It is doing things. I mean, it's it is helping a little bit with with the podcast. Good, just a little bit though. Good. Sometimes it doesn't do a very good job. <laughs> but that's the difference between free AI Sometimes and paid AI. Sometimes it gets my name wrong. Yeah, yeah I got yep. your name wrong. Yeah. How dare it? See, it's not gonna replace us. They're yeah. too stupid. It's <laughs> too stupid. It's not gonna replace us, but it will kill us. Yep. You no. just determine that. I agree. No. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's not enough of it for it to kill us before we kill them. The AI? No, the people that control the AI. But soon AI will just control itself. That's a whole other discussion. That is a whole other discussion. Self-learning AI is still theoretical, I'd want to say. It's not theoretical. It exists uh, it, to the point that you're talking about. Yeah, no, it exists to an extent right now because, like, they do the thing where they just like they kind of create like a stick figure inside of a program, and then they and it's literally just like a rag doll. It can't stand or anything like that, and then it needs to learn how to walk, stand, walk, run, and then navigate obstacle courses. And they run, they just run the program over and over and over again until it actually learns how to like navigate the the obstacle course. I was, mm-hmm. That's always interesting to watch those. I like those. Yeah, they're called TAS. There's AI robots. TAS. There's AI robots that fire guns. Okay. What? Yeah. Firing a gun isn't against the I laws of, as, of robotics. And it tells it, it knows the difference between its targets. I haven't seen this. Yeah. And once again, that's still not the same as cars. Technically AI at this point. Well, it's an AI program. It really depends on what you want to mean by AI. Because, I mean, people keep saying things are AI when none of it is intelligent. Absolutely none of this stuff is intelligent. 
Oh, I mean, I okay. mean what, what do you mean by that, though? Yeah. It doesn't have its own intelligence. It just doesn't. It well, cannot learn itself. It needs to be taught things. It cannot have an original idea. So what you're saying is this isn't artificial intelligence. It's just artificial wisdom. More or less. I mean, fair enough. So it, so there's artificial wisdom robots that know the difference between its targets and just straight up shoot them. See, I would say that. It, but like, what? OK, so I guess what is because I've always said there's a difference between being smart and a difference between being knowledgeable. So what are we calling wisdom? What are we calling intelligence? What are we calling smart? What are we calling knowledge? Well, it's a, it's because it's because like well, it's I just consider the stats. smart to be a combination of all of them. Well, I, I actually don't. I think you can know absolutely nothing and be super super smart. I think you can literally not know a single thing, but be well, one yeah, of the smartest people in the that's room. That's knowledge. You don't have to have all. my my right. understanding of smart has always been combination of knowledge, wisdom, and common sense. Okay, I would say it's a, I would say it's a combination of common sense and like wherewithal because you, if you you give me something that i've never seen before i'll figure out how to use the thing right mm -hmm. i say that's smart but i don't have any knowledge on what the thing is or or anything like that so but you're using past knowledge to understand what it could be doing i, I guess well, when i say knowledge i would say knowledge is based on like information that you like input of information so i guess yeah if you want to say i'm utilizing past knowledge but the knowledge that I'm utilizing past from the past isn't necessarily knowledge. It's ex an experience. Still, so like still knowledge though. Yeah, I guess I, I've just always thought of knowledge as in like actual, like concrete. Academic. Yeah. Like information. Like I have to read it and I have to retain it. And then that's knowledge, you know, kind of a thing. I've been hard having this argument quite a bit. Some recently it's like, if you don't know anything, you could still be a genius. You just don't know the right information. Right. Like and somebody sometimes could... you know too much and you think you're a genius, Terrence Howard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wanted to bring up Terrence Howard, too. <laughs> oh, Terrence my God. Howard? Terrence Howard, you don't know what he this is? He thinks that one times one equals two. So that's – I'm not bringing that up. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that because that doesn't make sense to me. Well, I've read his papers. Apparently now math is subjective nowadays, too, because I've read his people have their own whatever realities. So in – in Lilo's reality, one plus one might not equal two; it might equal three, and you can't discredit her is for this that. Why, is this why we're hitting her with a car? This is yeah. This is why we're hitting Lilo with a car. Yeah, and I'm sorry <laughs> to anyone that t believes that, but you're wrong. Math is the only constant in the world. Yeah. So, it's the language of the universe. So yes, so math is the language of how we can understand the universe. Um. But then it so I math math is concrete until it gets changed. But like because it's math weird. math was uh, well it doesn't get changed. It gets newly updated. discovered. Yeah, because we, we math, discover things that we were wrong about. Because yeah. math didn't exist, right? So it's not like so we we made math the way it is to make sense of the way the universe is. Yeah. Yes. Right. So we made it the way it is. So I guess we could change if we really wanted to. It just would need to line up with the way the universe works. Right. Yes. But it's kind of like things changing. Like uh, there's like a – I don't want to call it a principle. It's not a law. It's not a principle. I don't know what it is. But like in the science, science whatever, the, like nothing can ever be proven. Things can only be disproven. And if they're considered proven or true, it's that they've just withstood the tests we have been able to create for them so far. Yeah. So Sci like – Science nine, 90, 90 – nine percent of science is basically a theory yeah until it's proven wrong like yeah yeah and that's the only way it, it ends up because like it's proven wrong so it's wrong but if it's proven right it might be wrong someday and that's yeah and that's kind of what like terrence howard is kind of trying to come forward he's got some things some theories some things to uh to try to present to the scientific community um and I hope he does. I really, I really hope he gets to present it to, um, to the science community. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta. I need nobody to interrupt me here for a second while I get this out. There's a couple things I need to say to pre preface what will happen going forward. Because I listened to Neil deGrasse Tyson's response to Terrence Howard. Oh, you listen to the whole thing? Not all of it yet. Oh. Not not all of it, but he did bring up a very good point. 
and here's and the reason I bring up Neil deGrasse Tyson is because Terrence Howard specifically brings him up. I'm not on the side of Neil deGrasse because there's a lot, apparently a lot of fucking haters out there. I'm not saying whose side it is, but he has the point of that's how science works. Your papers have to be peer reviewed, and people have to talk about them. And Terrence Howard claims that Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't listen to him. Neil deGrasse Tyson did say that he read his paper um, and he has explanations for certain things. Now, whether or not Terrence Howard is correct or not, I hope the science community does work with him because he's thinking of everything on its fucking head. And if one, one tiny thing that he can think of is true compared to all of the fucking cockamamie things he might be saying, because it's hard. The hardest thing about listening to Terrence Howard is he's got so much information that he has to say at all points in time. He doesn't get to speak clearly. I feel like that's his biggest problem. Nobody's giving him the actual chance because they think of him as an actor. So when he talks on an interview like Joe Rogan, it sounds like he's crazy. He might be. He might be a genius. He also might be a genius that doesn't know anything. I don't know. But his ideas are very controversial, very crazy. And I hope that people get to work with him. And I hope something comes out of it. Now, I can't exact. I, I think you should, on your time, listen to what Terrence Howard has to say because I can't explain it all. To Is you. there a specific pl like place or resource that you can tell me that I should listen to him? Should I listen to him on Joe Rogan? Um, should I listen to him somewhere I, else? Like I left my phone in the car. Otherwise, I I have his website pulled up where you can read all his papers otherwise yeah the uh, joe rogan experience is joe probably rogan like, might be the most digestible way um it. yeah currently um it's yeah it's it's probably like a episode it's like two weeks old at this point i think um, he's been Terrence. on more than once yes what's that i think no he, no no in I fact he that's was once on a couple of years ago no joe rogan um has made comments about when okay. um when Terrence Howard first kind of came out on the circuit going on to talk shows, this was maybe three, four, five, six, seven years ago, um, that he first brought up the whole notion of one times one equals two. Um, he's also been trying to, uh, I forget what um, right, so the flying can I ask you things one, he one has. Question. Yep. Are you sure that it's one times one equals two? Yes. And not like one plus one equals no, something different? No, one times one equals two. And the whole basic behind this is because now i'm this is why i didn't want to talk about it because i completely don't agree with it i've read his paper it doesn't make sense because he's missing the 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 primal definition of what a multiplication is right and that's what i'm confused about because like i could see someone making a argument for whatever because i've seen i've seen the uh the formulas there's certain formulas that you can do where it's like one is equivalent to zero based on certain formulas that you plug in yeah and you and you'll if you if you if you do one in the place of the thing it'll equal zero and if you put zero in the place of the thing it'll still equal zero or whatever so yeah i mean but there's there's certain things that don't make like he 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 basically from how i understand it is you can't get rid of that other one Okay. Like you can't just make it zero out of nowhere because that means that both sides of your equation aren't equal. Okay. Um, so that's basically what it comes down to. So when you do it, and like I said, they, they, they forget the fundamental definition of multiply, which is adding groups together. So the group is an entity and not something you're actually adding together. Yeah, because then what would what would zero times anything be in his well, in his world? What would zero times anything end up being? That's the thing. Here's another thing that science and mathematicians probably argue about. Maybe sometimes I don't know exactly what it is, but as far as I understand, let's just do this. What's three hundred and fifty-eight times zero? Zero. That's zero. Yeah. Wrong. No. 
It's an error. You cannot multiply by zero. Multiple. It is not something times zero equals zero. It is something times zero equals an error. I it is you, not a computation. Are you sure you're not thinking of division? Because that's that's division. I know that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Division, right? Division. That's yeah. what it is. Multiplication. It's zero. It's zero. So like that's just how it is. It's kind of like so. Terrence Howard also has this weird fucking loop. Now, when you put any arbitrary numbers together, you can create f something happening. But what's the square root of two? It's an error. There isn't a number that is the square root of two. Okay, it's an error so how can you take what an iphone gives wait you? hold on a second hold on a second there's no square root of two this is not something i've no is there really and if then you did a square root of two and then if you take that number and you cube it it equals two hold on yeah i don't hold on i don't know what you're talking about right? yeah what does what? your number come out with i'm for the square root of two room. yeah it's 1.4142135624. Now turn your now turn your calculator no, sideways and cube it. It doesn't oh, equal 2. Oh, now now do the square root of that. Okay, it equals I don't something. know what the loop oh, is. Yeah. It equals something different. It's, I don't know what you're so doing. So the calculator is wrong because the calculator is can't you're do correct. the whole number. Correct. Right. So it doesn't, but it doesn't equal two. It equals it's, almost three. It's it's a loop. It's a loop that I don't have however, it correct. I don't have it correct, but it is a weird fucking loop, and it's an arbitrary. However, like, why the are you argument that you're making together? can also be argued on the basis of one third doesn't equal point one three three. It equals point, or my bad, not one point three three. It equals point three repeated. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And if you add. Point three, point three, 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 repeating together three times. Yeah, you get point nine, 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 nine repeating, which equals right. one. Right. Yeah. It's it's a it's a weird thing, and and that's the weird thing too. It's like my that's, phone, that's, my phone will do math differently than your phone. But that's Androids human and error. iPhones do. That's not math, math error. Differently. Yeah, that's human error. Because I think uh, this, yeah, mine will do it based on the order that you input the information yep. and yours will do it based on order of operations Correct. which is what a calculator does so this so when they call this a calculator app it's actually not a calculator yeah. app it is just a math app yeah because it's not doing things yeah correctly. and that's what and that's and that's the thing that terrence howard does his math on so <laughs> i'm serious he pulls out his phone he and that's the thing is he Ever, unfortunately, every time he talks to people, and I got to say this, I hate having to say this. We're going to bring this up. Anytime he talks to people, it's not a normal Joe Schmo. He's talking to celebrities. And ain't no celebrity going to buy a cheap piece of shit phone. So they're obviously buying the bougie thing of an iPhone. And they're like, oh, so my gosh, you're right. so they do this stuff on the calculator. Like, so right. all of their math is following this not appropriate order of operations. Makes sense. Um. It is it is a bullshit thing, and I don't know what it's like on uh, the Android, but right. the Android uh, has a full scientific calculator. Yeah, but uh, so but that's 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 the one thing that he's wrong about. He does have tangible flight, tangible flight that he's invented was uh, is is cool. I'd like to see how he actually powers those things. He says, and "What's this supposed to be? Crazy? What? What's this?" They're basically hexagonal panels uh, of flight. You'd have to see them. You go to his website and check his shit out. Just just look at it. It's worth looking into. I'm not saying he's correct about things, but these things of flight that he has, basically it's these little drones. But these drones are able to fly independently, but they're also shaped in a way where a bunch of them can actually connect to each other. And that allows them to basically pick up anything. And it's like infinite. They can fit together in almost any shape and pattern. So these drones can all fit together to work together. They can go in air and underwater. Like it's just some things that he uh, in, intangible flight. I forget what he, it's called, but yeah, he's got, and it's based on um, the flower of life. And I don't. If you don't know what that is, I don't know what to tell you. Do you guys know what the flower of life is? It's the symbol from Bring Me the Horizon's Sepaternal album. That's that's the flower of life. And 
basically it represents all movement any object can basically make in a three-dimensional space you see on ancient things like the pyramids um the aztec and the egyptian pyramids and stuff like that are you looking it up right now no. so did you look it up mm -hmm. okay so yeah when you look yeah it just looks like a bunch of circles um into like chain link together yeah. kind of it's f t to the listeners out there i'm sure you'll put the image up right here um for everybody <coughs> so yeah and that's basically like looking up like if you make the like at the pyramid itself if you put the pyramid up there you, you can technically move it in all directions you can think of and every point of the pyramid will technically follow those circular lines and uh, he technically, through mathematical equations and uh, on a computer software, using strictly gravity, and I put quotes in, in the air quotes, is because Terrence Howard doesn't believe in gravity, he believes in ma uh, magnetism. Um, he's trying to kill the god of gravity, um, he, as he says. Um, you don't believe in gravity either, do you? I don't believe in gravity. Yeah. Do you believe in magnetism? I do. Okay. So it was kind of exciting that he brought this up, but he was a, they were able to do uh, re theoretically create Saturn, recreate all of Saturn, including the hexagonal shape on its top of its planet. Okay. Did you know that that yeah. apparently Saturn has a hexagon on top of itself? Yeah. And through math. And and their laws, they've been able to recreate it. Right. It's kind of uh, it kind of a trippy thing to get into and and see. Interesting. It is. Well. It is very interesting, regardless <laughs> if it's right or not. No. Right now, I want to say that I'm gonna claim he's right in the same way that like the first person that said that the earth is is round mm -hmm. you know yeah the first person to ever say that everybody said he was wrong but in the long run he was right so i'm going to say that about terrence howard he's probably wrong he's wrong but 200 300 years from now he'll probably be right yeah. speaking of the earth being flat we didn't say that oh, i guess we did yeah but uh so now there's people out there that are saying that flat earthers are actually right but the earth's not flat we're just in a plane in a hole that is on an even bigger earth which it's called like the great ice ball yeah theory have you heard about that one yeah and there's a bunch of, apparently there's a bunch of other these pockets yeah places that one's interesting yeah that one i i enjoy yeah i haven't gotten too much into it but we're just a puddle <laughs> We're just a puddle on in a, on, a, on a gigantic ice planet, yeah. which it, it it it's just fun. It's just fun to think about that yeah. people think like that. Like, all right, well, on that, it's a uh, ice pockets. It's like <laughs> then when you think about like the aliens, they come in from other ice puddles. Oh, so they're not even coming from other planets. They're yeah, coming the same from fucking planet, bro. Yeah. They're just ice puddles. And then they're just more advanced because they thawed. Maybe that's where the Loch Ness earlier, Monster is. Earlier than us. Wouldn't you think that? No. The Loch Ness Monster just went into the water and said, fuck you guys, I'm going home. And just there's like a tunnel. And it just went to a different ice pocket. No, because I figured if there was that much ice, then there would be no unfrozen tunnel. Why? Because how much ice there is, is it be so cold? Mm. I mean, there's a puddle here. There's got to be thermal vents from somewhere that are unfreezing these pockets of ice. He just followed the thermal vent. I figured it'd be different um, magnetic holes. Magnetic poles? Poles and holes, yeah. Because like, of how the magnetic comes out and everything like that, and how it shields... 
stuff from uh, radiation from the sun so essentially where the holes the holes are this it's not shielded from the radiation as well as the rest of the planet oh, that's what they think i figured it was just a that, thermal no, I pocket just, coming I just, that, I that's what I fig- that I didn't say they thought anything. That's my that's my understanding of how I think it would. See, I figure it'd be a thermal pocket coming from like the core of the planet. See, but the core of the planet's not even that hot. I mean, it creates molten lava. Not not according to these people. Well, a flat Earth can't have a core. Yeah. Well, a flat Earth is on a bigger planet. That's just that would have a core. See, but it doesn't make sense to me why. So okay. So then, okay, now we're, we're this episode's getting even longer now. So, because this doesn't make sense to me on why the core would even be hot and why it would be melt magma or why it would be a steel, steel solid ball, why any of this stuff would happen. Because what they say is that because there's all this great pressure, right, mm-hmm. in the middle of the earth. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make sense to me why there'd be all this pressure in there because theoretically the closer you get to the, the center of the earth, the more equal material you have on the inside of the earth and on the outside of the earth. So somewhere in between, you should have a singularity where there's actually no pressure. Yeah, I think that's a lake. What? Yeah. um, So there's like a giant underground lake ocean thing that basically the crust of our earth floats on top of. I think is what they've discovered recently. Like really far down in there, there's like th- that's where a lot of water is. Okay, so so then so then are those people who are discovering that saying that there's a core of the Earth that has all this high pressure? Because that's my thing. Is like, right? Theoretically, shouldn't you have less pressure the further down you go because you're creating the singularity of equal mass pulling you one way and equal mass pulling you the other? Well, I don't know. I I. I'd have to get more into that because I don't know how it's pulling you the other way. Well, because it's mass. I missed that part. Well, you'd have to believe in gravity. Well, I mean, if it's the, you, if it's still the center, like that's still where the dense is. Like I don't know where it's pulling away. I don't. That that one I didn't get. Because it's you're going into the earth. So okay. all of the earth that you're going into that is now above you on the opposite side of you as you're getting closer to the core. That is all mass that should be pulling you that direction because all mass has a gravity. So therefore, the closer to the earth you get or to the center you get, you have more mass outside of you that is pulling in the opposite direction. So the only way that I think that the pressure in the middle of the earth would actually work is if gravity doesn't exist and it is magnetism. And therefore, there is a steel ball there that is pulling everything toward it. Right? Um, so that would make that would act that would I mean, kind of I sense. don't know. I mean, if the source of gravity, if the source of like, where's the source of Earth's gravity coming from? I guess that is what the we sun. would have to do. Well, but, like, but if, the, if the source of Earth's gravity is coming from the entire mass of the entire planet, then yeah, I see what you're saying. Or is well, the source of our gravity coming from the core? But it does. It doesn't matter. Well, that does not matter because all mass has has grabbed you're right but so if you're if you, but that's even if why i'm not flying at you right now you have mass and you also have gravity but i'm not being pulled towards you so that's because because the, we don't have enough to correct so that's what i'm saying is, is if the source of the gravity of earth is the core then it doesn't matter then it doesn't matter well it because does. because that's the source of the gravity it's going to be stronger like you you would have to tell me that the mass of the planet now has more gravity than the core does is what you're telling me and if that's the case then that means our planet is just flying into bits and pieces because they would that would be repelling each other but if our gravity is the core that's how our planet is staying together like that oh so you're saying that the core is, is the source so, of the gravity. Well, I know, understand yeah. I understand the source of that that is irrelevant. The source of the gravity is irrelevant. Yeah. But what you're saying is that the core is so dense yeah. that no matter how close to, to it and no matter how much mass outside of it you have, it's not gonna counter how dense the core is. Correct. Oh, okay. So it's it's 
that dense of a court. That's okay. how I kind of always thought of it as. That's why I didn't get what you were saying at well, first. Well, because I didn't think it was – the reason why I didn't think the core was dense because there's it there's li- there's a liquid core theory and then there's the steel core theory. So if it's a liquid core theory, it's not dense at all. Well, it could be. Wow. Well, lava is com- very dense. Well, you cannot th- swim through lava. Right, but that's you don't even sink in lava. But lava, I don't think lava is technically a liquid, is it? I think lava. I think that's a liquid. I think, I think lava think it's is still molten techni- rock. Right, but I still think it, I think lava is still technically a solid. I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's actually a liquid. It's a liquid. Is it okay? But it's but it's less dense than a rock. <laughs> yeah. So. Right, so I'm saying all there's all rocks above you, and then there's liquid in the middle, so therefore it would be less dense. So, but dense. but it not necessarily. I mean, yeah, but like density doesn't necessarily have anything to do with anything. What a density doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it. Its mass could be g- much greater than what its density is, which is what lava essentially is. I'm not following you right now. I, uh, I, get, I think we got off on a <laughs> weird path here. But yeah, so that was my thing about the Earth, though. Is that, yeah, so that was my thing. So, yeah, that's, that's how I see it. I see the source of the gravity is the core. And it gathers more ma- mass from just having shit on top of it and then that is the entire gravitational pull of the earth Mm. oh and then speaking of that too more gravitational stuff i want to know what the actual gravitational force of the earth is because we talk about 1g right and 1g is the force that earth pulls down on stuff Mm -hmm. but we're also spinning yeah so there's a centrifugal force yeah that is trying to throw us away so I want to know if the Earth actually wasn't spinning at all, would we even be able to stand? Like I'm actually like, is that actually one of the things that allows us to li- that yes. allows life to be here? Is actually the rate of spinning that we have? As far as I know, is if we stop spinning, I think we'd all fly off the planet. No, it would be more gravity if we stop spinning. Oh. Okay. Because right now the spinning is trying to throw you away from the planet. Yeah. So yeah, so that's maybe what I was just thinking of if the Earth sh- literally just stopped spinning. stopped on a dime. Yeah, you go flying. Yeah. Carl, looks like your fucking gears are turning. I don't think the Earth spinning matters too much to our gravitational pull. It might have an effect, but I don't think it has as big of an effect as what so, you're thinking. Well, I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure. I'm not thinking one way or okay. another. I'm just curious if it would have an effect to that because what happens if the earth stops spinning is that one side of the earth is just going to get way too much sun and then the other side is going to get none well yeah i'm not i'm not necessarily talking about like that's the really big problem i'm not talking about climate stuff i'm talking about Mm -hmm. we're talking about gravity right now yeah but yeah so that's just i was just curious if if we were to stop would would we have no life here because it's kind of like if if the earth stops spinning like there's a planet somewhere that's tidally locked to its sun kind of like the moon is to us Mm -hmm. and they say that it's that it would be a habitable planet but there's only like a hundred and like 20 mile ring around the top and bottom of it like around the i guess prime meridian of it or whatever that would be habitable so the side closest to the sun wouldn't be habitable and the cl- side away from the sun wouldn't be habitable but there's a 120 mile ring that would emu- emulate earth's environment i mean but what does that mean exactly uh, what do you mean what does that mean i mean there's a lot of this earth that's not habitable and people still live there <laughs> <laughs> do they like parts of africa i mean it's habitable i don't know about that and they're able to live there yeah but animals can thrive there mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of them just die from not having water. I mean, like it's not exactly habitable. I mean, they survive, but it's not exactly habitable. Yeah, I feel like humans can do that a lot of places, and polar bears. <laughs> you think polar bears could live in more places than the North Pole? Um, they actually can. Uh, mm-hmm. They're apparently considered one of the most adaptable planets. 
Are there planets. polar bears other places? Uh, animals. Well, okay. <laughs> other places. I mean, we got them here. Well, yeah, but the, na- natively, do they naturally live in Australia or Africa or Brazil? No. Okay. Because that's I. Because when you said most adaptable, I was actually thinking penguins. Because there's penguins in the tropics and there's penguins in yeah. the Arctic, right? Yeah. And those are but, naturally there. But I mean, polar bears are adaptable as well. Uh, I learned this from Lost. Oh boy. All right. Spoiler alert for those of you that haven't watched Lost, but that's why there's a polar bear in episode one. Okay. Lost. They're teleporting the teller bears. What are the numbers without looking at your arm? Four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, forty-two. Prove it. Four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, forty-two. Why? Why do you care to know that? It's, I don't. I don't know if it's something that I care to know. It is it something that is in, in my you? brain. Because they had the. So I. I've never watched a show. Yeah. I've heard you talk about it. Yeah. Thirty years ago, even though the show's probably only like eighteen years old. Um. They had to type this number in like every hour. Yeah. That's what they had to do. That's what this number was. They had to type it into this thing every hour or something would happen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they got sick of doing it, so they just decided not to do it one day. I mean, yeah, I guess. And then the others showed up. Yeah. Is that what happened? If you guys want to talk about loss, tune in on the next episode. That was two rights to make a wrong. Okay. Good timing on that call. Oh, wait, but this is still going. So, hey, yeah, uh, subscribe, like, follow. Uh, if you want to watch uh, episode nine, click here. If you want to wa- uh, just watch our entire list of stuff, click here. And if you want to subscribe, click on my face because there's going to be a circle in front of it. Thank you. Bye.